Hi, Neil. How are you? I'm very, very well, Douglas. How are you today? Doing great. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I know it's a little bit late there. You're in the UK, yeah? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's nine o'clock and it's getting dark already. So it's, uh, yeah, the uh, trying to make the most of the summer, but the, uh, you know, it's uh, the lights telling us that it's uh, coming to an end. So uh, there we go. That's the way it is. <laughs> has it cooled off at all? Yeah, it has. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been quite, it's been, been, um, been, Pretty pretty warm today, but it's uh, been been nothing like the uh, the temperatures we have been experiencing over the past couple of weeks. So, which we're very very pleased about. So that's um, you know that's that's a good thing that it hasn't been that uh, that hot. I mentioned this to uh, I had Humphrey Hawksley on a couple of weeks ago, who's a BBC correspondent, and I mentioned about a picture I saw on the internet. Somebody somewhere in the UK had filled up a bin and was sitting in the bin drinking a beer. Uh, it was right out on the street. It was quite funny. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine the um, you know the, uh, the the people in the UK are very resourceful when it comes to uh, you know trying to trying to keep cool. And then uh, those temperatures were were unheard of. We got a forty one degrees, I believe, in the uh, degree centigrade in the UK, which was uh, which was actually a record. So uh, so yeah, we, we're having to get used to those uh, those rising temperatures now, unfortunately. How many people's homes have air conditioning in the UK? Not many, right? Very few, very few homes. I would say um, I, I, I can't remember or recall having uh, going to a home that actually has um, has uh, air conditioning. The main the main buildings, the big buildings have, but uh, you know, generally in in, the, in people's homes, definitely not any air conditioning. So uh, the um, the business of fans being bought has been, has gone up, got up significantly in the UK over the past few weeks. Oh, I bet they just sold out. I bet Tesco Lotus sold out of fans completely. They yeah. are completely gone. You cannot get one for love, no money. Yeah. It was rather like when COVID first hit, try to find masks and hand sanitizer that was just ran out everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you couldn't get you couldn't get it anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> So you got a book series called Commando Dad. And as we were talking about before we got on, there is a difference of slang in America and the UK. And going commando in America means going without underwear. But in the UK, if you said going commando, people wouldn't think that, right? That's not what it means. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, yeah, I think the, uh, I think the going commando going like going underwear free um, so really, I think it was uh, young Joey Tribbiani from Friends who really uh, introduced us to the uh, to the term "going commando" in in that way. But uh, in, uh, in the army, go, like sorry, in the uh, in the UK, um, being commando is being special forces. So being quite, you know, one of the uh, one of the elite in the uh, in the military. And uh, fortunately for me, I was able to. Uh, um, to have that in my, uh, you know, in my in my life, which was uh, I'm always phenomenally very very proud of. Well, it is a it's a very honorable job, and I think the American equivalent would be the Navy SEALs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. correct. Absolutely. Very, very elite team indeed. I don't even understand how that became a slang. I, I suppose it it means the idea of you're ready to go without having to, <laughs> in a sort of a sexual connotation, you don't have to uh, have those pesky underwear getting in the way. Uh, I know, absolutely. Maybe it's about preparation and planning. I'm not too sure myself. You know what, maybe, Douglas, you've uh, you pricked my curiosity. I think I may, I may go and do a little bit of research and find out exactly why that happened, why it became a term in America. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's something called the Urban Dictionary online that I think I might uh, type that in and see what comes up. But uh, I think that might be a very interesting read. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Commando Dad is a whole book series that you've written, right? How many books in the series? Um, there are, there are um, five, five books, um, six if you include the, uh, the one that uh, was, was basically, the first book was called uh, Commando Dad Basic Training, which was not three. So uh, actually it was for six weeks prior to uh, the baby being born. And and then that was condensed down into uh, not to twelve months, which was Pocket Commando Dad. Which uh, I don't know whether you know Andy Murray, the famous tennis player in the UK. I've heard um, of him. Yeah, he famously was a Commando Dad and uh, and used Pocket Commando Dad to get ready for the first deployment of his baby. Um, so yes, yeah, <laughs> so we've got we've got quite a nice series of books. Um, you know that um, that 
that hits a lot of um, a lot of areas. It's all it's all about empowering new parents and uh, expecting parents, and um, and then parents moving forward in their journey of being um, being uh, you know being uh, active and hands on parents. And uh, it's been an absolute joy to be able to write these books for people. Well, there is an old saying that the baby doesn't come with an owner's manual, and you just make it up as you go along. And I, and I think maybe what you've done is actually written an owner's manual. Absolutely, yeah. And I think that's one of the things I say. I think one of the uh, one of the things I did. It was ten years ago that Commander Dad Basic Training came out. It was an anniversary on the seventh of May this year. And um, and I used to say babies, you know, used to, they, they used to say that babies didn't come with a basic training manual. Well, they do now. And here's the um, here's the here's the book that you need to get. I, I say report to the stores. You need to go and get your copy of, uh, of Basic Training. And it was really the book I uh, I wish I'd been issued when I was a first time dad because I was I was as clueless as anyone else. And um, and it was um, and it was a, it's a phenomenally challenging time when you become a first time parent. Even finding out you're going to be a first time parent. The second book I wrote was called um, Commando Dad Raw Recruits, which was pregnancy and childbirth. Which was the um, the role of a commando dad? Um, there are 266 days from finding out you're going to be a dad to actually holding your baby trooper for the first time on average. And um, and raw recruits was really about what your job is during those 266 days, and it's backup support for your commanding officer, i.e., mum to be, and it's what you do in those 266 days. And that was really the um, the things that underpin commando dad are hands-on support um, from day one. When you find out you're going to be a dad, what you want, what you need to do to be an effective hand-on, hands-on partner and then a hand-on dad as you move forward from day one. And that's what it's really, really all been about. And it still is about because, the, um, you know, I engage with dads regularly on, uh, on social media and it's all about backup support. It's all about answering questions. It's all about saying to the guys out there, there is no such thing as a daft question, as a silly question, as a stupid question. You ask the question and um, and someone will be there to give you the answer or somebody there will be there to point you in the direction of where, where you need to go to try and find out, to be empowered, to be able to do what you want to do and move forward. That's what it's all about. Well, give me an example of, of what uh, the expectant dad might do to help support mum to be in those 266 days you mentioned. So I think for me, it's um, it, it's about it's the it's the when you well I say the little things, but it's about the um, uh, making the you know uh, making the meals. You know, if you're um, if you're um, if it's if it's first time, say say right, you go and sit yourself down. I'll make you a cup of coffee. I'll make you a cup of tea. What what would you like? How can I uh, you know how can I how can I assist you around the house? Is there anything I can do? It's about it's not about taking over. It's about offering the support, asking the questions. Um, you know, like, you know, how can I help you? Sometimes they might just say, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not too sure what you can do. But you say, well, I'm here. And um, and just sometimes just your partner knowing or your wife knowing that you're there and that you're that you're poised, waiting to support is sometimes enough of um, what they need. I don't know exactly what I need, but knowing that you're there, you're there. It's fantastic and it's wonderful and it and it helps me feel supported um, even though you're not doing anything you're doing lots you're doing everything that needs to be done at that moment in time does that make sense yeah it makes perfect sense um, on your bio it says that uh, this was the book that Prince William used when George was born or was gonna be born is that correct that's absolutely 100% correct and also um, and also uh, Prince Harry Used it for the deployment of his first baby as well. So yeah, we have, uh, we have royal we have um, uh, royal members of the commando dad uh, team, which is quite exciting. It's always uh, it's always lovely to talk about the two guys who are uh, you know in, in involved in the commando dad gang. <laughs> well, how did you find out about that? Did they contact you and say, "Hey, we've read your book" or something like that? Well, they didn't know, but it was the um, I got um, it was a, it was a very surreal day. I got a phone call from the uh, the mail on Sunday, and it was um, and it was a bit of a I wasn't too sure whether it was genuine or not. To be fair, and then I got a phone call to say um, that um, this is the royal correspondent from the mail on Sunday. Um, did you know that you have a royal fan? Um, Prince William has been given your book by some colleagues of him in, him in the forces. 
and he absolutely loves it and he's using it to get ready for the uh, the birth of his first child and I was absolutely blown away I couldn't believe it it was like I went is this for real she went well it's going to be in the when I'm I'd like to talk to you and this is going to be in the you know in the press on Sunday so yes it is I went, and the reason I know is because he told me at a, at a, at a, at a party that he was at about this book. And I was um, uh, and I was absolutely blown away. And it was just one of the most amazing things. But the, the funny thing is, Douglas, is that um, when I get a, when I get a message from um, a dad on Instagram or Facebook or something uh, from a dad saying, I've got your book and it's helping me like like you can't believe. That gives me the same thrill as it did when I found out Prince William and Prince Harry and other people at the book. It's um, it's it's fantastic. But uh, having having royal the royal seal of approval was uh, was pretty wonderful, I have to say. Well, I was going to ask you if you could put the royal warrant on your books now, or not, or does it take a bit more than that? <laughs> yeah, I think it takes a little bit more than that. I think um, I, I think I mean it would be it would be a nice to have. But uh, being able to uh, being able to put the uh, Prince Harry and Prince William use the book is um, is enough. So um, you know what though, it's uh, it's it's worth thinking about. I may I may I may see who I need to talk to to get the royal warrant on the book. <laughs> you would be in the same group as those biscuits that Charles has from the the duchy or something. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it's good enough for a biscuit, it's good enough for commander advisor training. There surely. you go. Yeah, all organic. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. On here, it also says that uh, some of the books suitable for children ages three and up, and then there's an illustrated field guide. So this one is sort of the next one, right, after they're born. A lot of this sounds like scouts. I mean, tying knots and building shelters in the woods. This sort of sounds like uh, the Boy Scouts or what I, what I remember of it. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, I think there's a lot of, um, I mean, with, with, uh, with, cross, with, with forest school, there is a lot of crossover, I would say, in the, in regard to the scouting movement. Um, but I think the thing is for me is it's not a um, it's not an, the scout is obviously a, a very big organisation, and um, and not everyone has the access to that organisation, and not everyone um, wants to be in the scouts. Uh, but you know what? Everyone is a, everyone is a child, and everyone gets you know like uh, when I was you know a lot of the stuff that's in Commander Dad Forest School Adventures is what I did when I was a child. I mean, literally, we get up in the morning, we go to school, we would come back and then we would have a biscuit and then we'd run out of the house and wouldn't come back until it was dark. And the things we were doing are in that book. They are making the dens. They are finding the tallest tree that we could possibly find and climbing to the top. It was, um, you know, it was it was trying out making knots and doing, um, you know, making bows and arrows and chasing each other around and and setting up ranges and targets and things for catapults and uh, and all those things. And um, and I think the reason I've done Forest School Adventure, Commando Dad Forest School Adventures, being a, being a Commando Dad is being about having experiences with your children because they are, they, are, they are young for such a short period of time. Somebody once told me when I became a first time dad, the days are long and the years are short. And in the blink of an eye, I have a 20 year old, a 19 year old at university and a 16 year old who's just going to be sitting in your exams next year. If you'd have told me 20 years ago that it would go in a blink of an eye, I, would have, I wouldn't have believed you. But it really, really genuinely is true. And I want to try and encourage people to um, not just to get out there and go, right, go and build a den. Don't do that. You can do that. That's absolutely fine. But if you have the opportunity or, you, or you, if you want to create the opportunity to go and experience that with your child, with your trooper, as we call them in command that parlance, um, then grab it with both hands because um, it's, an, it's, like, it's memories that, you, that no one can take away from you. And your children will remember the things that you get up to when you're with them. They really genuinely do. They, they really genuinely do. I talk to my children all the time about what we used to get up to. You should drive them nuts sometimes when, come on, we're going to the forest, we're going to go and build a den. And they'd be like, oh, no, not again. And now I talk to them and they went, we had such a lot of fun, um, you know, building dens and making knots and making rope swings and building little rafts and having races and things. They remember all these things. And, um, and they're precious memories that no one can take away from either me or from them. 
And um, and that's what I want parents to experience. Get out there and just make those memories because they, you know, you'll cherish them for for a lifetime. Well, you had mentioned that uh, your kids are grown and you could probably start a new series about Commando Grandad fairly soon, I um, think, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, I think that'd be, um, you know, that. I, I don't know that, I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to consult grandparents for that though, because obviously grandparents are renowned for um, being far more lenient than their parents. Like, but they, they were like tyrants as parents and they're, they're pussycats as grandparents. It's true, <laughs> it, it tends to skip a generation, it really does. Oh, is that right, right, okay. Yeah. So you see, I need to I need to research that, Douglas. That's my, um, you know, well, if it be... is could be the next book, Commando Grandad, I need to do some work. <laughs> that could be your next project. Neil, we do have to wind this down. We are out of time. Thanks so much for coming on the show. It was nice talking to you. Do you have a website you want to give out? Yeah, it's um, www.commandodad.com. All right. So, um, and, that's, um, and that's where you can go and uh, you can find out lots of information about all the books that we have available. But a great way to contact me and talk to me is uh, my Instagram, which is commando underscore dad, at commando underscore dad. And, um, and if anybody's got any questions or, you know, wants to have a conversation with commando dad, that's a great place to go. And, I, and I'm always as, um, as responsive as I can possibly be with the time available. So uh, that would be a great place to have a, um, have a conversation um, if anybody would like to. Okay, great. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. It was nice meeting you and best of luck with your books. I hope they do well. Thank you very much, Douglas. Thanks very much. Great to talk to you.